vina Oh tigo vina vina Apostle Dr. Stanley Ndovi. I call him my covenant brother. Prophet Chapo. Apostle Galaya. Archbishop Kambalazaza and your wife. Bishop Kambalazaza, the Akasiao. Pastor Charles Makata and your wife. Busa Makata and the Akasiao. Apostle Nguira and your wife. Atuma Nguira, Kumasan the Akasiao. Pastor Martin Tom. Busa Atom. Pastor Tawera was here standing for Dr. Zach. Busa Tawera, I mean, I've given me that Dr. Zach. Apostle Kovua and your wife. Apostle Kovua and the Akasiao. I'm sure these are our invited special guests that we invited for tonight. Alindoa tu amene aitanidu amatuwa. I'm sure I have not forgotten. How can I forget Dr. Willie Chaponda? Ningai wale bwanchi a Dr. Willie Chaponda. And his wife. Many of you may not know that I worked in the bank and the first day I worked in the bank, the first person I worked together with was Apostle Willie Chaponda. And this man had a lot of faith. He left me in the bank counting money and he went out to full time ministry. And so we're grateful that he's here tonight with us. Um, I also want to welcome in a special way Dr. Kalanda. Dr. Um, Kalanda. He is our family doctor. He is the one that has helped me through the journey. And he is in Lilongwe, so he came with his wife. We want to say thank you so very much, doctor. But he is a believer as well. And he would say to me, uh, apostle, this is this, this is this. But when the doctors in India tell you this, 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 uh, in your heart you must know God is bigger than what they are saying. Uh, 
what kind of doctors are those? Madokutala also wa otere. Wonderful doctors. Madokutala also wa. When he's treating patients, uh, he, he will know that this one is demons. And he will call pastors to come and cast out the devils. Why don't you give the Lord a big hand of praise? There are people here that have come from all over. Uh, could we ask, please? Um, of course, let me let me recognize our bishops, uh, Bishop Mpakati, who has been here at the church uh, during all this crisis. Bishop Bishop Mpakati, Thank you, Bishop. God bless you so very much. And then we have a bishop, our bishop for uh, Eastern Region. Bishop Kaduma and your wife. Kumawa Titero. Eastern Region. Bishop Kaduma. God bless you, sir. And then we have the bishop for Malawi. The one who is interpreting for me. And then we do have uh, pastors that are here from the different places. Would you please stand up Calvary Family Church pastors? Let's give them a big, 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 big welcome. Thank you for making it to come. I also want to say thank you for Pastor Nyaruni from Zimbabwe. The UK wanted to be here tonight. Um, but they, they couldn't. Our pastor for South Africa, Pastor Kaposa, I'm sure he's here right here. Hallelujah. Thank you. I have a very difficult task tonight. I have so many referees that are around. Many referees. No, no, no. They're, they're, they're checking on me. They don't want me to preach. They say if you preach, you will come, we'll lift you up from the stage. Uh, I'm sure that's why the, the doctor is here too. <laughs> and to support the doctor, there's Dr. Queen uh, Dube too here. Um, so, um, they, they say, please just give a testimony. And uh, if you exceed, we'll know what to do. We'll not tell you, but we'll know what to do. But men of God and uh, ladies and gentlemen, the enemy is at work. This whole world belongs to the devil. The Bible says, War unto the earth and the sea because the devil is cast there. He is in control. And um, you know very well, I was 
a very, very, very strong. I think I was one of the strongest apostles in this nation. I would preach three services. And I mean, go from uh, district to district. Nobody could stand with me. I would finish all the interpreters. If that is true, shout a big amen. amen. I will preach three services in a day. Heavy, strong services. And as I do that, when I go to the last one, people would be thinking that this man is not going to preach. But when they take me and just put me on the pulpit. When the anointing gets on me. I would preach as if that is my first service. Those of you who have gone to whistle stop know that. I'll go from nation to nation. I would arrive today on a long flight and tomorrow take another long one. Just exchange suitcases and go for the gospel. I was strong. I was preaching and casting out devils. Preaching and bringing the gospel of healing. I've seen miracle upon miracle. Sickness was far away from me. It never occurred that I would one day be a patient. I would only go to the hospital to pray for people. But not to go and receive medication. Until one day. It happened. Uh, through the advice of the doctor here, because I was feeling open, tired, and headaches, so he began to do some tests. And then he made a recommendation other tests. Maybe uh, let's uh, go this way to try to find out what this is. And then uh, went to India. When we went to India, we went just as just going. I was healthy. I walked you know, into the hospital. Everybody there, when they, when they looked at me and looked at my wife, they thought my wife was one who was sick, not me. I would, I would take time to convince them that it is me. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know what I was sick from. And you know, uh, when they finally diagnosed that it was cancer, and that cancer had, uh, had uh, sat on a very difficult place. When you have cancer, they will do a surgery to take away the cancer if they can. But where this cancer was was right behind the nose. And then when I 
when, when the doctors were asking me questions, I was getting angry. Questions where do you smoke? I said no. Do you drink? I said no. I, I almost I wanted to say to them, listen, I'm a pastor. At one point I told them. And they said, yeah, but there are, past, there are others who smoke and also drink. But I said, not me. So when they discovered it was cancer, First, my first uh, reaction was it can't be. Not me. What have I done? What is wrong? And so it took a while for me to finally accept that this was so. Because I was still working strong and doing everything. Came back from India. In fact, when the moment the moment they uh, discovered that it was cancer, they said one who worked one to straight away start dealing with this. I said no. Look, I've just I just came here. I, just, I didn't tell my children I'll be here hospitalized. My family, the church doesn't know. So we need to go and get clothes. So they allowed. But please don't waste time, come back. When I came here, I did the Joseph anointing in Neno. Those of you who were there saw so the mighty miracles God did. In that place. People got born again. That time I was saying, Lord, intervene. Find a place somewhere where you can just intervene. But it didn't happen. I finished the meeting. I went and did another meeting in Lilongwe. And it was a great meeting. Nobody knew. That time, I was a cancer patient. So, I then left and went. I was walking, walking. I, I mean, I was not sick anywhere. I arrived there. Then they made sure I understood I was a patient. They said, sit here. For the first time, gave me a patient's uniform. I said, me? Then put a wristband on me. And patient. I sat there, I said, Lord, what is this? After a while, I accepted it. And ladies and gentlemen, the problem with cancer is not what you have done. Uh, other, other sicknesses you can know where they are coming from. If it is malaria, you know you were in Insanje and you didn't sleep under a net. If your bowels have opened, you know you've eaten something that is bad. But not with cancer. And cancer has one mission. It's to kill. It comes to kill. The medication that they give you, if cancer, the sickness doesn't kill you, then, 
the medication will kill you. Those who have gone through it know what I'm talking about. You have to stand against it. Those who have You have to stand against it. And there I was. Here, here is a parcel, now a patient. The devil began to speak many things. There were times I thought I was going to die. But I would think and be reminded of the prophecies that God has given. What has God said? 30 years in plus. I said, no, it shall not be. The Lord God will reign. The Lord God will reign. I had to fight the battle. I had to be strong. In the process, my wife, who was my guardian, and ladies and gentlemen, this woman is an intercessor, I can tell you. Because there was a time I could not bring out the voice, I couldn't speak. I had to be pointing using I couldn't stand up. I was so weak. I lost over 20 kgs. She had to support me in a foreign country. Over 3 million gods and the people that are helping you as doctors are all Hindus, not Christians. And so I said, Lord, what is this? By God's grace, I will be it will be up and down. How is it? How is it? One day we are out of the hospital. I'm going out with my wife. We had gone just for a checkup. And she falls. And then she's crying. I'm saying, darling, come on. Friends, stay. She can't stand up. She's, gro she's groaning down. down. I raise her up and I call for a, for a wheelchair and then uh, we put her on the wheelchair and then we go to the uh, outpatient department. Uh, they do an x-ray. You have heard what she said, two fractures. And then here I am. My guardian becomes a patient. I had to make a decision. What do I do? I, had, I didn't want to ask God. Where are you? I've been telling people he's everywhere. You never leave us nor forsake us. So I didn't have to ask God. But I accepted the situation. We want to thank God. Just for it to be treated, it was $3,800. My resources were finished. Thank God for Calvary Family Church. Thank God for sons and daughters who came up and gave us that money. Thank God for the churches that gave all the money we needed. She managed to have a surgery. 
operation. I had to lift her up now. I had to take her to the bathroom and everywhere. Two patients, one better than the other. But then it couldn't go on for long. I want to thank God. When we are now struggling, I had to have a special diet. Because the, the, also the food in India is all spice and curry. So I had to have a they, they had to give me special diet. We are struggling until we said, no, we must bring our daughter here. So our daughter Alice, where are you Alice? Alice are good. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. This girl is an angel. She is an angel. We, we let her come. Thank you. Be seated. She came. And she had to help us. The first night she arrived. She saw us. Looked at daddy. Who was a strong man. And he was praying for people. Miracles happening. Now he's a patient. Looked at the mom. Who was a nursing sister. Today she is a patient. The whole night. She did not sleep. She was crying. In the morning, she woke up. Mama We said, what's your problem? She said, I didn't sleep the whole night. I've never seen you dad like this. I said, if you're going to cry, it's not going to help us. We have cried and now are tired. Don't, Don't cry. And thank God she was strong. She stood and helped us until we were able to come back. We came back here. We did several, several treatments as well. You need to know that you have to go through certain stages of the chemo, of the what they call chemo. Six. And it's not easy. People run away in the midst of the medication. They run away because the chemo can kill you. And then they took me to do radiotherapy where they send high voltage rays into this area 33 times. And then they send the treatment And I had to survive all that. When I went back this time, I had to go back for checkup. Ladies and gentlemen, they did every trace, every trace. They put you in a big machine. And all you'll be hearing is just bells going on. Sometimes 45 minutes, one hour. These things are it's almost like a maula. And you hear the machine. And then you say, 
This must be what our people are doing back in Africa. This is which country. And then after that, they do the head scan. They did everything. And ladies and gentlemen, the doctor said, we've looked everywhere. We are not seeing any trace of cancer. Cancer is gone. Cancer yata. I was listening. Then the doctor looked at me. He saw I was not moving. He said, Dr. Mbewe. I Dr. Mbewe. This report says. There is no cancer in your body. Cancer ya teratu I was still looking at him. Then she said, I'm saying it for the third time. There cannot be any better report than this one. You are healed and cancer is gone. Give the Lord a big heart. Still, I did not respond. My, when we were leaving the place, my wife was already singing. And, dancing. and she looked at me and says, What's wrong with you? I said, Hold on. I went. To the guest house. By the way, when we in that guest house, uh, Doctor Queen Dube visited us there. Ah, uh, Doctor. I I I got into the room. I sat down. My wife is busy singing. Going to the kitchen, preparing food. But me, I'm there. Suddenly it hit me. God said to me, You are a dead man. Your ministry was a dead ministry. The devil intended to kill you and to kill the ministry. But my grace, my mercy, has come upon you. Immediately, I began to weep like a baby. Tears began to come down my face. My wife came in. She found me wiping tears like a baby. I understood. I am now well. Ladies and gentlemen, standing before you is a man who has a testimony. God heals. He is our healer. He heals. And he never fails. Cancer has been cancelled by Christ. Christ reigns over cancer. Cancer is under my feet in the name of Jesus. Let me finish my testimony. I will give you scriptures. Write them down. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. 
Many of you know I have studied grace. I have talked about the throne of grace. But God said to me, look at it again. At the throne of grace, two things come out. Grace and mercy. In the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, there was the mercy seat. In the New Testament, we don't see the mercy seat. We see the throne of grace. From the throne of grace, we find grace. We obtain mercy. Mercy talks about God himself. David says, have mercy upon me, O Lord. Psalm 6, verse number 2. For I am weak. Heal me, O God. For my bones are worked. Psalms 41, 3. The Lord will strengthen him upon his bed. The bed of languish. You'll make him out of his bed of sickness. He took me out from that situation. The Lord made me to understand. Mercy. What is mercy? People in the New Testament. We're being healed because of the mercy of God. I had to cry out, Son of David, have mercy on me. On top of their faith, they needed the mercy of God. And the Bible says, James 2.13, mercy has triumphed over judgment. Whatever judgment the devil has put over your life, in the name of Jesus, may mercy triumph in the name of the Lord. Triumph over your situation. Because mercy triumphs over judgment. Psalms 41 Verse number 11. Verse number 10. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me. Raise me up that I may requite them. But this I know that you favor me because my enemy have not triumphed over me. I didn't know I had so many enemies. There were others who were happy that I was sick. There are people I had to block off on my WhatsApp. Who were speaking nonsense and against me. I had to switch them off. But thank God that they have have not triumphed over me. By this I know you favor me, O God. My enemies have not triumphed over me. May I ask you to stand, please? I will do this and I will sit down. What has happened to me is mercy has rewritten my life. Mercy has changed my story. Hallelujah. Amen. Mercy has rewritten my story. I would have been dead today. You, you would have been a people without a father. But mercy 
Kumachifundo. Has rewritten my life. Chalimbanso mbirianga. Mercy of God. Chifundo chamulu. His mercy never fails. Fundo zake mzomu yaya. By the way, he says his mercies are new every morning. Chifundo zake zima karaza sopano. Mawa wina uliwonse. Great is his faithfulness. Kulubirika kwa ache mkukukuru. Raise up your hands. Weza ni manja ameneo. Mercy. Chifundo. Rewrote my life. Chalimbanso mbirianga. Thanks, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, for years I traveled alone, all wrong. My heart had lost its joy. For every soul, then grace placed me right where I belonged. When mercy rewrote my life, would you come sing with me now? Mercy. time his mercy mercy hallelujah rewrote my life your mercy oh God mercy rewrote my life yes I could I could have fallen my soul Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, his mercy. A 
as we sing this song again whatever sickness is in your body today when we sing mercy the Bible said those people cried out mercy have mercy on me Lord demons left blindness was healed the mercy of God is still available today whatever you have in your body today the mercy of God can turn around your situation mercy will do the work mercy is given by God himself on top of your faith mercy will work we'll sing one more time in the name of Jesus raise those hands Come on, sing it now. Oh, mercy, mercy, rewrote my life. The mercy of God, mercy, 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 Lord, rewrote my life. Well, I could have fallen. My soul cast down, but mercy rewrote my life. Sing it again, mercy, 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 mercy Lord, rewrote my life. Hallelujah, Lord. His mercy, mercy. Bishop's coming. Yes, we. I could have fallen, I could have fallen, my soul is yes, but mercy, rewrote my life. Sing it again, mercy, mercy. Yes, we rose my life. Oh, I could have fallen, my soul cast down. But mercy, mercy, we rose my life. One more time, mercy, mercy. Would you lift your voice and sing it now? For his mercy, mercy, 